Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Asif Qureshi and you are watching Dr. Asif Lectures. In today's video, we will talk about how to systematically approach a report based on complete blood count, CBC, or in some parts of the world, it is also called FBC, full blood count, CBC more commonly used, okay? So here I'm showing you a blood tube where after centrifugation, the blood is divided into different components. At the bottom, you see this red chunk, which is basically the hematocrit, the red blood cell mass. So all the red blood cells are stacked down there. And then there is a small portion of WBCs and then there is plasma. So 55%, most of the blood is actually plasma. Um, a very small percentage, roughly around four to 5% is the WBCs and the platelets and roughly around 40 to 45% is your red blood cell. So these are the different components of the blood when you take it out from patient uh, via phlebotomy and spin it down in the tube, okay? So when we talk about CBC, these are different parameters um, which we talk about. So here's a fishbone analysis. We talk about WBCs, we talk about platelets, and we talk about parameters associated with red blood cells, hemoglobin, hematocrit, and other parameters. So basically, we have three types of cells to talk about. We talk about red blood cells, we talk about WBCs, leukocytes, and we talk about platelets, thrombocytes, okay? So erythrocytes, red blood cells, leukocytes, WBCs, and thrombocytes, platelets. A CBC report is comprised of details, numeric details, quantitative details, qualitative details, and structural details associated with these three cell types, okay? Let's talk about RBC first. So when we look at a CBC report, there are different parameters associated with that, okay? Um, and let's get them all on the screen first. These three parameters are indicative of quantities associated with red blood cell. Let's talk about them one by one. First thing is red blood cell count. Red blood cell count basically means the absolute number of red blood capsules, red blood cells per volume, per unit volume of the blood, okay? Now this is telling you how much red blood cells do you actually have, okay? Hemoglobin um, is the amount of hemoglobin per volume. This is another important parameter to look at. And hematocrit is the percentage of red blood cells of the total blood, which I showed you in the earlier figure uh, there, okay? So that's the hematocrit. So whenever you see um, a red blood cell report or the CBC report, you have to, in your mind, divide the report into three sections. First, I will go and look at the RBC related values. Then I will look for the WBC related values. Then I will talk about what are the conditions associated with platelets, okay? So RBC is the first thing that we are talking about. Now, these three values, they usually all go in one direction. So for example, if there is a patient who has a low red blood cell count, is also expected to have low hemoglobin, is also expected to have low hematocrit, okay? So hematocrit, hemoglobin, and RBC count. If they are low, think about conditions associated with uh, low hemoglobin, uh, there could be anemia, and what, what could be the causes of anemia. If these uh, indices are uh, on the opposite, they are high. If there is more red blood cell, if there is more hematocrit, if there is more hemoglobin, think about other conditions which are associated with increased indices, okay? Um, polycythemia and other associated disorders. So, as I always say, try to systematically approach the report. For CBC, divide it like we did for the liver. In the liver, we divided it into uh, damage markers and cholestatic markers. Here, we are dividing it into markers associated with red blood cell, white blood cell, and platelets, okay? So for red blood cells, these three are the quantitative values. We also have a bunch of qualitative values. For example, mean capsular volume. So this is very important. It tells you about the size. If MCV is low, and that shows up on the report, you should be thinking about iron deficiency anemia and all those anemias which are basically associated with decreased red blood cell size, okay? If it is high, think about megaloblastic or uh, vitamin deficiencies, vitamin 12 deficiencies, all those associated with high. So 
if you systematically approach the report, you should first look at what is the RBC count, what is the hemoglobin concentration, and what is the hematocrit, and then you move on to what is the mean capsule volume, is it low or is it high? And similarly, mean uh, cops, this is the concentration of hemoglobin, okay? How much hemoglobin in each red blood cell? And then there is MCHC, which is how much hemoglobin per concentration of the blood, and then the red cell distribution. Each one of them is telling you if the cell size is low or high, if the hemoglobin concentration is low or high, the MCH and MCHC, and the red cell distribution width. Now, red cell distribution width actually tells you what are the different sizes of red blood cells available in the blood at one moment of time. So if you see an increased RDW value, increased RDW value means that in this patient, small red blood cells are also present, medium size and then large because there is a there's a long range of distribution of sizes this is called increased rdw and that gives you an important interpretation if the patient is anemic but the bone marrow is working very very nicely you may see increased rdw value it also is seen in a lot of other anemic conditions so my point is whenever you get the cbc lab report divide it first into red blood cell indices wbc indices and platelet indices in the red blood cell indices first of all look at the quantitative value what is the rbc count what is the hemoglobin concentration what is the um, uh, what, what was the third uh, value come on come on come on let's see if you remember that Hematocrit value, hematocrit value. So RBC count, hemoglobin concentration, hematocrit. Once you establish that they are all normal, don't worry about it. If they are on the lower side or if they are on the higher side, look at what is the mean capsular volume, what is MCH, what is MCHC, what is the RDW value, okay? So that will then uh, help you analyze which type of anemia is this or if it is a polycythemic condition, okay? Now, if we talk about the WBC uh, indices, the normal range of WBCs is usually 4 to 11 billions per liter. 10 to the power 9 is roughly a billion um, per liter. But trend is important. In my first video, I told you that all laboratory reports are basically one snapshot. If a patient has, say for example, WBC count of 11 billions per liter, now that could be a good value or a bad value. What if the yesterday count was 17 billion per liter. So this patient is now improving from 17 to 11. But what if tomorrow's count is 17? So this patient is getting worse. Always repeat the values or try to have a look at the previous laboratory values. This is all very important, okay? So trend is important. If the leukocyte trend is value is going down or is the value going up, gives you very important information if the patient is improving or if the patient is deteriorating, okay? Now, not only the WBC count, but the differential count is important. What do we mean by differential? See, you already know that WBCs, white blood cells, are composed of uh, different types of cells. For example, all these categories, neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, um, their percentages are important. So the normal percentages are all written here. Neutrophils comprise uh, roughly about 60% of all the WBCs. Lymphocytes 20%, monocytes 5%, eosinophil 4%, and the rest are the others. And if these values go high, for example, if neutrophil value go up to 80%, think about bacterial infection. If lymphocyte and monocytes go very high, think about viral infection or tuberculosis. Eosinophil go very high, think about allergy diseases or parasite associated diseases. So differential count is very, very important. You look at the total count, TLC, total leukocyte count, and then you look at the differential leukocyte percentages, okay? And remember the common causes. There can be infections when their uh, numbers are disturbed. There can be cancers, and if somebody is on steroid treatment, steroid treatment also increases WBC counts in the blood, okay? By disturbing the marginalization and the process of diabetes and all that. You don't need to remember the details for this lecture, but remember, these are the common causes of increased or disturbed WBC count. Get it systematic, guys. You get a CBC report, think about three parameters, RBC indices, WBC indices, and platelet indices. In RBC indices, start with the quantitative stuff, then move on to the qualitative stuff. 
and extract the information. If it is anemia, if it is polycythemia, what could be wrong? What kind of anemia? Is it microcytic, smaller in size? If it is megaloblastic, larger in size? Once you are settled with the red blood cell, move on to WBCs. What is the total count? Is the total count increased or decreased? Whatever the count is, try to look for the previous records or the prospective records so that you can identify the trend. Once you have established the count, then look at the differential leukocytes, okay? Which particular type of leukocyte is having increased percentage and then um, always have in your head the common causes, okay? Uh, after this is the easy bed, the platelets. We actually have a lot of platelets than we actually require. But remember, if it's going down 40,000, say for example in dengue fever, uh, wash it out guys because these patients are now being prone to develop um, bleeding tendencies, okay? Uh, very high platelets count should also be investigated because that's also a problem, okay? So usually the CBCs report platelet count and the mean platelet volume, which is what we call the MPV. If the mean platelet volume is really, really high, think about there is something going wrong in the bone marrow. It's producing a lot of megakaryocytes because newly born platelets are larger in size. So if the MPV value is high, they're newly born. So think about why there is a lot of newly born platelets. This then finishes the systematic approach to the CBC. In this video, I'm not going into the details of anemias or polycythemias or the tumors associated with the blood cells, but a very basic general systematic approach. Look for RBC indices, look for WBC indices, and look for platelets. That's all. Thank you very much, and I will hopefully see you in the next video very soon.